You were saying a few moments ago, had Tracy Clays not sent out that tweet that he did, do you believe he's still the head football coach of Minnesota today? Uh, I really believe. Uh, um, I'm not so sure about just the tweet, but I think if he would have handled the boycott, threat of the boycott, would have handled that in a stronger position. And let's not forget, uh, he knew that boycott was coming, and when it actually came out, uh, I don't believe he was even in Minneapolis. He had decided to travel uh, out to San Diego for the press conference for the Holiday Bowl. And I think Jerry would agree with me. If I think that was coming down as a head coach, a more experienced head coach, I'd have said, I'm not going to any press conference. I better be right here trying to do uh, damage control. Uh, and along with that, some of the side issues, there had been articles leading up to that that there, the attendance in football was down this year. Uh, then after the boycott, it was coming out that uh, there was, especially after the you know the petition and the tweet that you know 70 percent of the season ticket holders were threatening not to renew their season ticket orders. Um, uh, so, and then you talked about the new facility. They, they, they're building that facility, but they're not done fundraising. I know for a fact that fundraising isn't going as well as they'd like. Uh, there were some potential contributors that, that said, because of this issue, let's put it on hold right now. Um, so to me, you know, the, the way this whole thing was handled by Minnesota was very poor. And you can point a finger at Tracy Clays, but you can point a finger at a lot of other people. Uh, and it, it, I think it's a classic uh, example on how not to handle a situation. How often have we, you know, talked about, you know, you don't want to take a one-day bad story and turn it into a two-day bad story or a three-day bad story or a four-day bad story. This just goes on and on and on and on. And, you know, when you talked about Tracy taking that three-year contract, you know, I, I know Tracy extremely well. He was a student assistant for me at Kansas. And while he was at the interim, I stopped in one day, and I said, Tracy, he said, let me give you a, advice as a friend. I said, do not take this contract under any, to take this job under any circumstance unless you get a five-year contract. And he said, Coach, I'll take it under any conditions I can. I said, you're making a big mistake. I said, they're in a bind. You got more leverage than you think. And I said, they're not willing to pay the big bucks. So if they pass on you and you've got public opinion right now, they're going to go after the outside and hire an unnamed, an unknown assistant coach like a Tim Brewster. And he's not going to come for less than a five-year uh, contract. So you, you're exactly where you want it. Well, he took it on a three-year basis. The next time I saw him, I said, well, you can't do anything about it now. I said, here's what you need to do. You need, you need to win at least eight games and then hire me as your agent, and I'll get you a big-time contract, and I wouldn't even hire I, I wouldn't even charge you, you know. And, uh, and that's why when it goes down again, he won nine football games, and by their standards, and as many times that they've they're changed their socks there, so to speak. Uh, Dave, I heard you talking about being compared to Wisconsin. And the other program that, that the Gopher Faithful compared to is Iowa. You know, and you look back and forth. And I, one of the things I look at Iowa, I say, you know, they've had three athletic directors since 1968. They've had two football coaches since 1978. When you count up the number of athletic directors, I mean, I had three during my tenure. T my tenure tenure when you look at the number of athletic directors that have been there either full-time athletic directors or interim and now the number of football coaches since i departed it's alarming